Hi everyone. Not sure when you're watching this, but I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you all a blessed new year, also in the coming year of 2021. I think it's safe to say that no one has really been expecting, or at least a year ago would have been expecting that we'd be in the situation we are today. Even the fact that, yes, over the past year, there's been actually very few Sundays in which we could gather all together. And now, even for the last month and a bit, we have been in lockdown and have been doing everything virtually. And yet, this is where we are. And also here, this is where God has placed us. Now, we're looking around and maybe listening to the news and other people. It seems pretty clear that a lot of people are fed up with 2020 and that many are happy to call it a garbage year say, let's move on and leave that in the past. Let's start enthusiastically with 2021. Now, of course, there's one hiccup there in the fact that, A, we're not really out of the woods yet. 2021 is still going to start with probably lockdowns and still dealing with COVID-19. But as Christians, there's also more that we need to consider there. I mean, I get it. We don't really think 2020 was maybe that great. And we all maybe have those same thoughts. But as Christians, we, we do look at time and every, every year also differently. And yeah, we maybe get the fact that it is tempting to think that if something just happened, if this just passed, then things will be better. But that's not really the case. As much as we, we might pray for the same things, and might pray that things would change, our real comfort and our hope is not so much that things will change as that things will remain the same. One thing and one person will remain the same. We find this, for example, in Hebrews. Since we've looked at the letter of Hebrews quite a bit this year, I figured it was fitting to also then end this year with a verse from Hebrews. And it'll be that familiar verse that you find in chapter 13, verse 8. There in the letter of Hebrews, we find a wonderful verse. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. In some ways, the context of this verse is perhaps kind of surprising. Verse 13 has these concluding exhortations, as you often find at the end of letters, speaking about all the things that in light of the grace that Jesus Christ has given us, we must now, we should be doing and pursuing, and that is our calling as Christians. It looks at a number of these things, and then it starts really a section on how we deal with the church, and even with church leaders. Right? It starts with this verse in verse 7. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. And yet, most likely we should be thinking about the background of this verse and of what he's saying here are some troubling times. The church is in some ways at a crossroads. Most likely, their leaders are passing away. These leaders who had brought the gospel to them, who had been maybe the, the first apostles, the first great leaders of the church, they are passing away, or like the author of Hebrews, they're somewhere far away, maybe because of persecution or whatever else is happening, so they can't be in the congregation right now, and the congregation is shaken up, because here they're facing persecution, here they have new leaders, and what are they going to do? And what can guarantee really their comfort and their hope? He says, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. If Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He doesn't say, his hope isn't so much that things are going to change. It's that Jesus Christ will remain the same. Despite the new leaders, despite what's going on in the world. And just think about what he's saying. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. And that fits really so much of what Hebrews has talked about. Even the, in the verses that we've looked, and the chapters we looked at, so much of it is looking at the past, is looking at the Old Testament, is looking at what God did through Moses and for Moses or for Abraham and his promises. If you know the book of Hebrews, you probably love also chapter 11, which speaks of all of these saints of the Old Testament and all that God had done for them and how they lived looking forward to God's promises in the future. And all throughout, the author of Hebrews is just looking at saying, like, this is what God had promised, and this is how it's fulfilled in Jesus Christ. And this is what these people look forward to, and this is how God answered them and cared for them in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, the same promises and the same plans and all that he had done then. 
is also the same today. And that's the next thing. Jesus Christ is the same today. And this is really where the rubber hits the road. We experience God's faithfulness and his care in today, in the present. And it's in our everyday life that we get to live out our calling as Christians. And we just have to look back to the past year to see that God has also been our God every day, every Tuesday, as he cared for us. Using also these circumstances in which we have found ourselves to challenge us, to help us mature, to teach us new things, and just in general, to also grow, even if it's growing by his grace in weakness. But really, the highlight of it is, is that when he says that Jesus Christ is the same forever. Jesus Christ, as throughout Hebrews, is that, as described in Hebrews, is that the Son of God, the eternal Son of God, the glorious, radiant image of the invisible God who was with God and who has created, through whom all things were created, who is going to be the inheritor of all things, so that the beginning and the end of all things. And he says, once again, that is really our comfort for today. That's really the comfort as we, for example, today, consider what God has done in the past year and look forward to the coming year. Jesus Christ is the same. His love for us and his love for the church, that is not going to change. His care for us also during the present is not going to change. His plan for the world is not going to be derailed by anything that happens. It's sure. It's confirmed because Jesus Christ is the same forever. 2021 is probably going to be just another year with its ups and downs, its challenges, and its joys. And through it all, Jesus Christ will remain the same. Once again, it isn't so our comfort isn't so much that things are going to change, is that Jesus Christ will remain the same. And I hope you see how comforting that is, but then also how it does challenge us and also sets us free or liberates us, as it does so. And it's comforting because in throughout our lives, it gives us this rootedness and this assurance, this rock-solid assurance that nothing is going to change because of Jesus Christ, who is eternal and powerful, merciful, and loving. That he is our anchor every day, forever. But it's also challenging. Because as we just noticed, and as we probably know ourselves, like we all in some ways end up living maybe somewhere in the future or somewhere in the past. Maybe we live in the future, like we were saying. It's just saying like we got to get past 2020, and if we get past COVID, you know, then life really starts again. Could be that. Could be also just more general, like how we do this all the time. You know, I'm just thinking if you're a younger kid. You're probably growing up and thinking, well, if I'm older, then at least I, you know, can get my driver's license or, yeah, I can't wait to grow up because then I can graduate. I'll be done with school. I can go get a job, maybe or a couple and you just want to get married or whatever it may be. Something that you're like, if I, I can't wait for this when you're younger, maybe it's I can't wait for this when you're older. As like, I can't wait to retire. I can't wait to have enough to be able to afford something. I can't wait to you fill it in something that you're looking forward to or just in general yes we can't wait for COVID to be over or maybe it's mostly that we live in the future but it's the uncertainty and the fear of the future especially in the time that we live in that is just causing us all of this anxiety today it's living in the future and, and we can do the exact opposite by live and it's yet the same by living in the past thinking that if I had just made different decisions if I had just made hadn't made those mistakes, if I could just be younger or go back to do something else differently, then my life would have been better. And we end up living in the past or in the future. Maybe we live for the good old days, whatever they may be. We all do this. We all expect our comfort and joy to maybe come from something that we could just change, if just that. And on this point, C.S. Lewis, in his Screwtape Letters, that book in which he imagines the correspondence or letters between demons, he touches actually on this. 
And in one of the chapters, the demons actually discuss how important it is to get people to live either in the past or in the future, but never in the present. And they prefer people to live in the near future. This is what, what Lewis imagines them saying. He says, we want a whole race perpetually in pursuit of the rainbow's end, never honest, never kind, nor happy now, but always using as mere fuel wherewith to heap the altar of the future, every real gift which is offered them in the present. And what he's saying is the demons in his, as he's thinking this, he imagines them wanting us to live in the future and always saying that, oh, I can't be kind, I can't be gracious, I can't do this right now, I, I can't do this right now, I'll do that in the future, but not right now. And every gift that God gives us saying like, oh, we'll just use that to enhance or, or get one step closer to whatever this rainbow may be we see in the future and never enjoying those gifts in the present. And you can just imagine Lewis in the back of his mind thinking of Jesus' own words when he has this parable of the rich fool who says, like, I have this an amazing harvest right now. Oh, yeah, I won't enjoy it. I'll just, first, I'm going to have to build bigger sheds, make sure that I can store it all up, and then I'll enjoy it. And he passes away before he can do so. His rainbow was those sheds, and how many different rainbows we may have in our lives as we seek to pursue them in the future and not enjoying God's gifts today. And it's actually interesting that Lewis is even writing this in the midst of what would have been a major crisis in his day, World War II. And the demons actually, in his writings, touch on that as well, considering the different ways people may be anxious or hopeful for the future. And how it, he imagines it works in the, in the demons' favor when people are hopeful for the future because they expect it to get better. Because the demons know and see that most likely just as leading people to disappointment. And it won't get actually maybe better, it might just get worse. People will be impatient and they will be once again stuck and without hope. Now what Lewis is, imagines is what the demon's greatest fear would be. And this is what he says. If on the other hand, he, believer, is aware that horrors may be in store for him, and is praying for the virtues wherewith to meet them, and meanwhile concerning himself with the present because there, and there alone, all duty, all grace, all knowledge, and all pressure, pleasure dwell, his state is very undesirable and should be attacked at once. He imagines that the demons would be most afraid of someone who is purposeful, living in the present. Yeah, maybe planning, maybe looking ahead of the future, but mostly living in the present and enjoying God's gift there, enjoying God's calling there. And once again, you can imagine C.S. Lewis having the words of Jesus in the back of his mind. Think of how Jesus taught us to pray. Not praying for our supplies for days to come, but say, pray for your daily bread. Ask again each day. Ask again in our no moment of need today for what we need. And also for that calling that is daily. Jesus himself in Luke says, take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross daily. Because it's something that we are called to every day. And that is what, where we live. Don't live in the past. Don't live in the future. God has placed us here. And he supplies what we need here. And he calls us to do his will here. And so as we swap 2020 for 2021, our real hope is that Jesus Christ remains the same. Whatever may happen also in the coming year, the more we see his glory, this glory of the Son who is eternal, who is powerful, who is merciful and gracious, the more we can rest in living today. Not with pursuing rainbows, or anxiety in the future, nor stuck in the past. And so, trust and be confident that he will supply you also with what you need each day again. Seek his face also for whatever he calls you to do in the coming year and whatever challenges we enjoy we may face in the coming year. Seek his face 
face or grace or strength or wisdom as you walk by faith day by day in the present, in today. And trust that Jesus, yes, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's also pray. Heavenly God and Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and all the glory that we can, that we see that you've placed in him as our exalted Lord and Savior. Father, we ask you to bless us also at the coming of this new year. We thank you that we may see the, the glory of Christ in the past in his faithfulness, and as we just also celebrated his birth, and we'll be looking once again at his life and death in the coming year and celebrating that. Father, in all of this, we see how you supply us with the grace and the strength we need for life. And Father, now also help us to see his glory as it is there forever. Christ as the head of the church, Christ as the Savior with every gift and every wisdom and all that we need to build his church, to rule the world, to bring everything together so that at the second coming he may renew creation he may get rid of suffering yeah that uh, there is a time when everything will change but that change is going to be brought with christ who is the same and father would all of that glory that we see in the past and that we look forward to in the future help us and guide us today in all that we we do as your church and as we trust and Father, we thank you then for the past year and all that you've given us, how you have supplied us with our daily bread, watching over us, guiding us, especially through challenging and difficult times. And yet how we can look back and say how healthy you have kept us, how you've kept so many of us employed with an income and security. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you too for the joys of births, of birthdays, of weddings and anniversaries and other milestones that have been testimonies to your faithfulness. May that continue also in the coming year again. And yet we also look back and we see challenges. Challenges in the situation that we face. Challenges in the passing away of a brother, a sister. Challenges in not being able to gather together. And also the lockdowns that continue to take their toll in different ways. And the difficult decisions that have to be made because of it. Father, in all of this. Would you help us to see that Christ is the same? And that that may be our comfort also in the coming year. That you would also in the coming year watch over your church. Father, we don't know when things are going to change. We don't have a schedule. We can make our plans, but we probably have been wrong already in many different times as to what exactly will happen when it comes to COVID and, and the regulations. So Father, let us also then trust in you and leave that up in your hands. That you would also watch over them as a church with love and unity by your spirit, wherever we are and however long we are also separated from gathering together. And Father, in this world in which we are living, we ask you to be also with all those who are dealing with COVID-19, whether that is those who are sick. Bless them and give them health and may the treatments work. Be with those who are grieving for the loss of loved ones. Be near to them. And may this also be a time in which you call the world to, to repentance and to coming to you as truly the God. And be with those healthcare workers who continue to do what they can, often in stressful and busy circumstances. Father, we ask you too to be with our government once again. May they, may you give them wisdom also in the year ahead. Would you also bless the efforts we as church have been pursuing for church to open up as that may happen as soon as also possible, and that all of it may be to your glory. And Father, there will be many different things that we're going to face again in the coming year, joys and challenges. May we all do that in prayer, trusting in you, living day by day, in total dependence on the grace that you've provided us in your Son, Jesus Christ. And may that be sufficient for us. May that be our joy. And may that be our comfort and hope. We ask you all this in Christ's name alone. Amen. Happy New Year. 
and may the Lord bless you then in 2021.